So welcome again guys for another video and this is our introduction and next we have our trivia for the day our trivia for the day is do you know that too much sitting and sleeping is can increase your chances of an early death sitting and sleeping are great in moderation but too much can increase your chances of an early death because guys do you know that too, doing too much things can affect something in your life like doing too much alcohol it can affect your liver eating too much you can make it fat so don't make things too much except for chasing your goal of course if you're chasing your goal do much effort for you to be able to be able to chase your goal so if you're just in your home try to exercise and discipline yourself so don't overdo sitting and sleeping because you can die early <clears throat> now our agendas for the part 3 of our video we have the word formation where the relations connot connotation and denotation the dictionary and vocabulary development and figures of speech <clears throat> now figures of speech every discipline has its own language and this much can be said of literature to understand literature, one needs to have a good grasp in this language and the devices which writers and critics alike have been using to communicate their message to the reader. The writer uses language to communicate it, to communicate his thought. To communicate his thought, the message to the reader. The literary artist makes use of certain device or mode, which include the alliteration, this is many, metaphor, simile, Metonymy, hyperbole, ephemesim, bathos, climax, synecdoche, irony, sarcasm, anticlimax, personification, oxymoron, imagery, satire, symbolism, paradox, epigram, diction, assonance, consonance, onomatopoeia, and rhythm. This is the language of the art. The language of literature. The artist is accountable to society in this language as a society sees it is from his art. But all the mentions above will not tackle it all but some of them will be tackling all. <coughs> as he beams light on his ills of his society and age, so will society examine his language. For he must first show marks of competence before the society can enter his clinic for examination. Society cannot be treated by a virulent, malignant, cerebral mole, as the blood is screened before transfusion to ensure it is free from HIV or AIDS virus. So will the language of literature be printed before endorsement? A writer uses language at two levels. First, at a literal and denotative, also called literal meaning, and secondly, at the figurative con connotative level where words are put into use as distinct from their standard meaning. When a writer uses language at figurative level, his objective is to achieve some special meaning or effect. Abrahams believes that such figures are the ornaments of language and integral to the functioning of language. Since art vibrates at these two levels, it is important to evaluate the writer's use of language in order to establish his true intent. But taken from another level, art is susceptible to verifying interpretations. The critic in evaluating a work of art could take it to other levels, thereby giving fuller interpretations to a writer's work in serving his purpose. Therefore, the critic has entered as a referee. The pivot where important art may revolve. Thus, the artist, while writing about his society, could achieve universality. As Oladil Taimo rightly observes, to be truly universal, you have to be truly local. You must adapt to your own country before you love others, other countries. So, that's the meaning of the line. Figures of speech are those sayings that depart from the ordinary dictionary sense of words or expressions. Rather, the writer tries to achieve a spectacular effect by using language innovatively. 
such as language is used connotatively and not denotatively. Let us proceed by examining some common figures of speech. So, com figures of speech innovates your language to achieve your certain goals. Now, we have first alliteration. Alliteration is a repetition of some consonants or letters at the beginning of some words. As they said, the repetition of consonant letters. <clears throat> like in poems to achieve some musical effect. The consonants are repeated so close that their application could easily be noticeable. For example, we have alliteration in these lines from Shakespeare's work where he describes life. It is a tale told by an idiot full of sound and fury, signifying nothing. The T beginning till and told in the first line and the F in full and fury in the second line constitute the alliteration. Now next is metaphor. It is sometimes called condensed simile, where one thing is likened to another. For example, when one thing is applied to another, here they are directly compared. Emeka is a lion in the field. So this, this is saying like Emeka is like a lion in the field. So she's like strong. John is a horse. Excerpt A. We have, com we have come to the crossroads and I must either leave or come with you. I lingered over the choice but in the darkness of my doubts you lifted the lamp of love and I saw in your face the road I should take. Instances of metaphor in the poem above are the following. Come to the crossroads. Darkness of my doubts refers to the doubt developing in the mind of the speaker to the relationship. So the darkness refers to the developing of the speaker's mind on the on their relationship. Lifted the lamp of love, my love shown by his lover. The road I should take, the choice to be made where there to stay or live. And in B, in the chill breath of the day's waking, comes the newcomer when the draper of May has sold out fine green garments and the hillsides have made up their faces on the garden on their faces. A painted smile by Christopher Okigbo. In the poem above, Okigbo is writing about his newborn child who was given the birth in the month of May a time when the rains have made plants to grow and everywhere is full of lush and green leaves. So the poem is about the message and getting the thoughts of it. And colorful flowers, Okigbo compares May to a draper. Someone sells clothes. The green vegetation covering everywhere is compared to garments. And next up is simile. This is where two distinctly different things are compared. So two things are compared. Where one thing is compared with another using such words as like and as. So remember that simile always, in a sentence, they are always like and as. So if you see a sentence like that, it is simile. And here are some examples. Each flower is scented like an incense bubble. Twists like a crooked pin. So you see there is a word like. Excerpt C. Let's live in peace for here like tenants. In touched huts with the well. Excerpt D. Sleep leaves my opening eyes slowly, unwillingly, like a true lover. From Abio Senecol. And next up, we have metonymy. Metonymy. This is a situation where an entire group of people or things are represented in an image by something associated with the group. For example, the pen is the sword, the crown is happy. In the first example above, pen represents writers who use the pen to write about society and criticize the wrong things people do, especially the leaders. They are thus seen to be stronger than soldiers who use the sword. Always the king is associated with a crown because he wears a crown. Now we have synecdoche. This is the last topic for our part 3 and then we'll have part 4. This advice by the writer where he uses a part for the whole or the whole for a part. Examples are, tell him all hands must be on deck. He has about 10 mouths to feed in his house. So it's like a part of the whole or the whole for a part. It's like something is 
some some group of people is like must be on something you get the point like all hands and 10 mouths all hands must be on the deck and 10 mouths must be in his house in the first example, hand is used to represent the persons whose hands are referred to. This simply means that everybody must participate. So, sinokdiki is like, you're telling something in a sarcastic way. And like that. In the second example, instead of saying 10 persons to feed, the word mouth is used. The expression mouth is used to represent the persons who own them. So, he has about 10 mouths to feed in his house. I hope you you get these things and we have some more but we'll make it for part 4 so...